Well, thank you so much for joining us back here. I'm Zelda Robinson, your host of the Higher Learning Network. Uh, the first segment with, with, with my co-host, Tony Hoax, Men of Higher Learning. And now that we're back, we have Chicago's next mayor. Because I don't know about you, but I'm tired of Ron and all his politics and shenanigans. Anyway, Amara Inya. Yes. Queenly, stately, don't you love it? Uh, yes, I'm so glad you're here, my sister. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so, so much for showing up today. Thank you. We are going to talk about a host of things, but first we have a caller, a live caller on the line at the uh, Higher Learning Network Broadcast Center, 312-738-1845. I'm told that one of my radio buddies is on the line. That's LaDonna Tittle, your tittle in the middle. LaDonna, did you just hang up? Were you too impatient? Well, I, hopefully you'll call us back. In the meantime, in between time, we're going to talk to Chicago's next mayor. Can we say that? Yes, you may. Yes, we can. <laughs> Amara India. Yes. Thank you so much for being us. And tell us what prompted you to do this. I've, I've seen your name all over the internet, everywhere. Yes. And I said, who is this lady? I never heard of her. Mm -hmm. But then you showed up at the West Side Ministers Coalition and you spoke and I was like, okay, I'm on board, girl, do your thing. <laughs> So tell us how did it come tell us who you are, where you came from and how this came to be. So I've been I've been in the Chicago area pretty much working uh, started my career on the west side. Um, I worked in City Hall uh, in the mayor's office and that was very intentional. And which mayor? Under Daly, Richard okay. M. Daly. Okay, so yes. you've been around. You know Chicago politics. Exactly, okay. exactly. And I was very intentional about working uh, in City Hall because I had been working in education. I had been working in uh, education equity issues prior to that and I really wanted to understand how decisions are being made, who's making those decisions, and who's not at the table. And it became very clear from my time there who's not at the table. Mm -hmm. um, and it really gave a lot of understanding about how complex municipalities operate, how do the departments interface with, with, with one another, those sorts of things that you really have to understand well. And so when I got what I, what I went there to get, I took that knowledge and went straight to the west side of Chicago, went mm -hmm. to the Austin community. And why did you choose the Austin community? Because we never really talked about Austin when I worked in City Hall. Really? Yes, and for me, Austin, it's the largest community area in Chicago. Um, it, there's some pretty, serious challenges in that community. We get the, the most number of ex-offenders come back to Austin. When you look at foreclosures, uh, the number of schools that were closed in Austin, there's some very serious issues. And so for me, it was, it was troubling that we never really talked about this community. And I've always been one to just go where the work is. Mm. And so there's so much work there. So that's where I took everything that I had and I went uh, to the West Side. And I was the executive director of a nonprofit called Austin Coming Together. Mm. And we were working with about 150 partner organizations doing community and economic economic development work, workforce development, everything across the board, education, activism. Um, I'm currently the executive director of the Austin Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I really had been doing the work on the ground in Austin, expanding out to other neighborhoods on the west side and then the south side. And it's because I see the issues uh, every single day and I live in the East Garfield Park community. Mm -hmm. And there, to, to, to me there's a sense of urgency about the need to really move in a completely different direction as a city. Mm -hmm. But what it requires in part is it requires new leadership. It mm. requires fresh energy uh, with a different perspective that has not adopted the mindset of the status quo. Mm. I think that's what we need to really move the city in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And so that's what prompted me to, to take up this challenge and to, uh, to declare, I was the first person to, to declare that I was challenging the mayor. And this is back when he, was, he, he wasn't as unpopular as mm -hmm. he is now. Mm -hmm. uh, and since that, the moment that that decision was made, I, I kept moving forward. Issues that affect our community the most, ex-offenders, employment, education, and Lord, can somebody please say, can you stop the red light madness? <laughs> yes. How is it that you would make a difference and that Rom can't do or doesn't seem to care about doing? Well, it has to be a, a whole system change. And so in addition to myself, we're also working with aldermanic uh, challengers to incumbents because we see that not only does the mayor need to change, but city hall, city council needs to be changed. We need more individuals who are independent and whose top commitment is to represent the, the needs of their constituents, of the individuals of their ward. Once we do that, it makes it much easier to pass legislation that's actually beneficial to the city of Chicago. Um, but you also have to have leadership that understands what is it that the average Chicagoan goes through on a daily basis. So when you are down at the Department of Revenue paying that money so that you can get the boot off of your car, mm -hmm. you know what that feels like. Mm -hmm. We need leadership that understands how hard it is when we get those 
tickets mm -hmm. all of the time mm -hmm. so that there's legislation that actually makes our lives easier. Mm -hmm. We need leadership that understands how hard it is to, when you're trying to find a good school to place your child, and how do we do what's best for the children of this city, not doing what's politically expedient or following some education reform trend. Those are the things that were not reflected in the leadership that we have. And on top of that, we need leadership that, that is collaborative and that's actually a uniting force in this city, not leadership that is seeking to divide us by race, by mm -hmm. socioeconomic status, mm -hmm. by community area. Mm -hmm. The only way that we can truly be a world-class city if, is if we understand our collective interest in moving forward together. And I think that's the, what this new leadership and new voice represents. And someone young with fresh new ideas. Yes. You know, I'm a little older myself, so I understand. <laughs> I couldn't tell. But Ram, <laughs> thank you very much. I knew it was something I liked about you. <laughs> but, you know, it's always been an older male from the dailies to Rom to uh, Harold Washington, and there's nothing wrong with that, but there's nothing wrong with having a fresh face in the form of femininity as well. Yes. Jane Byrne was the only other mayor that we had in which uh, my husband Tony's writing a book about and he's going to have her in it. Maybe we, we can have you in it yes. too. Yes. Uh, but, and, but what would you say to the person who's looking at this show right now and would say, well, why should I vote for a woman? She has no power, she has no money, we don't know who she is. Call us and tell us right now, 312. 738-1845. And I want you to look into the camera and tell the person, why is it important that they vote for you or vote for themselves by making a difference in what they their vote. Yes. Well, a vote for me is a vote for change in the city. A vote for me is a vote for our families. It's a vote for our communities. And if we say that we want the kind of change that needs to take place, we really have to move in another direction. In our history, it has been very male dominated. It has been, uh, leadership has really reflected uh, more men in the city of Chicago. And I think this is an opportunity not just for a woman in a leadership position, but for a change in the style of leadership. And so when we talk about things like nurturing in the community, which is what we need uh, in our neighborhood, Neighborhoods. It takes that all that different perspective that a woman can bring to the table. The other thing is that today is actually the the International Day of the Girl. We need to send a strong message to our women and to our girls in the city and around the country about what is possible. We cannot keep uh, reinforcing a message that they can't do something because they're not the right gender or they're not the right race or they're not the right age. All of those things seek to discourage women, girls, from realizing their dreams. And so this isn't just about myself. This is about the future of of our girls and the future of the city. Mm, powerful. And you heard it here first on the Higher Learning Network. So thank you so very much for coming out thank you. and sharing, us with you, sharing with us your time, your talent, your effort. And we will see you at the poll. <laughs> thank and you very much. And we will vote for Amara Enya. Amara Enya, Chicago's own first African American female mayor. And we, we said it first right here. <laughs> oh, the Higher Learning Network. Yeah, I said it, and I'm sticking to it. What about it? Before we go to commercial break, I, this is something I saw on YouTube. A young man, I can't remember his name, forgive me, but he, he had on a T-shirt that said, Be Phenomenal or Be Forgotten. Mm. Be Phenomenal or Be Forgotten. Yes. I think you are the kind of person that is phenomenal, and we will not forget you. We will thank remember you. you at the poll. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, and thank, thank you. you for watching. We'll be right back here on the Higher Learning Network with Chicago's own Mark Loveless, who is also running for Kennedy. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs> you good with bubbles. How about that? Yay! Oh, that was a big one. I was making a big one. Okay. for me? I see little people. Hi. What's your name? Vika. Spell it for me. V-I-K-A. Vika. Yeah. The important thing is, you need to start giving yourself healthy water without the sugar. No, it's not. My body is still here. Well, yeah. no, no water. That tastes good. I like, I feel good.
That's our Toys for Tot program for this year with the European American Association and the Higher Learning Network. We're inviting you to join us for the Christmas celebration to donate a toy to a child in need. And if you have a question, you can give us a call here at the Higher Learning Network Broadcast Center. We're live today, 312-738-1845. And our next guest will be Chicago's own Mark Loveless running for city clerk. Thank you, Mark, for joining us today. But in the meantime, we have a caller on the line, LaDonna Tittle. You're a tittle in the middle, my sister of the microphone. LaDonna, are you there? Good morning. <laughs> Mine's flat. Good morning, LaDonna. Hi. Tittle in the middle. How you doing, How you girl? Doing? Well, wonderful. Thank you so much for calling in this morning. Well, I'm glad that I got through and I just want to say that I am enjoying you and Tony's show. So much information. I can't write it down that fast. <laughs> <laughs> and believe me, I'm getting that cookbook out thanks to your Higher Learning Network self-publishing. We look forward to it. Please stop kicking my ass. <laughs> I'll stop kicking when you keep writing. How about that? I love it. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to comment on uh, several things. First of all, uh, I would like to know more information about the Kickstarter program and can it help us publishers that are, you know, do not have enough resources to publish our own book. And my other comment, uh, the young lady who is running for mayor, I thought she had and made some very good points. Amara Inya. Yes, and I wish her all of the luck uh, there is. And I know it's going to take more than luck. It's going to take money. It's going to take financing because uh, I do believe that Ron will probably have another term. Uh, and the next thing, of course, is the red light madness that mm. you mentioned. And I also wanted to tell people to be aware of the safety zones. Yes, thank you. you can get ticketed with safety zones. Got one, I know. around parks mm -hmm. and schools, and they want you to go 20 to 30 miles an mm -hmm. hour. That's another big ticket getter. Yeah, I know. I got uh, a ticket the other day in the mail. I think I was doing 34 in a 20. Yeah. Yes. That was because you were somewhere near a school yes. or a park. Yes, and I thought 34 was slow, so evidently it wasn't slow enough. <laughs> Heavy footing. <laughs> Heavy foot just got light foot. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for and I'm enjoying the show, and you all just keep up the good work. And Hyder Learning Network is what's happening, y'all. All right. Well, thank you, Miss LaDonna Tittle, Tittle, Tittle in the middle, and, who comes and, on. Hey, keep checking out Cooking with Tittle, please. You took Thursdays the words. At 7 and Fridays at 2. We're going to have Tony back on with that. Good old smothered chicken recipe. All right, now we look forward for it. Thank you so much for calling, LaDonna. All right, darling. Today's show is being sponsored by Karen Kelly of iTechs of Chicagoland, showing entrepreneurs and business owners how not to spend cash, but to spend barter dollars on business as well as professional or personal items. So if you're not in business, then uh, if you can't find a job, you might want to think about starting a business because we all have a natural gift, talent, or ability that we need to nurture and the only way to do that is to start get quiet and ask god allah yahweh buddha jesus jehovah jehovah whatever you call it ask it to show you what it is that you need to do if you get quiet long enough i promise you you'll hear it but in the meantime you're going to hear from mark loveless who's running for city clerk thank you so much for joining us today mark it's a pleasure Tell me, what is it that made you decide to become a candidate to run for city clerk? Well, I looked at the office, and I looked at what the original intent for the office was, mm -hmm. and I realized that my combined experience really bolted well for expanding the office to its uh, full potential. Mm -hmm. uh, and part of what you're talking about when you talk about entrepreneurship and small businesses mm -hmm. is one of the planks of why I'm running. I am also a member of the board of the Social Enterprise Alliance, as well as I've worked within an organization where we've been looking at starting a social enterprise. I believe that we have, as you say, we have the talent and the ability to expand the economic base uh, portfolio for the city of Chicago to include social entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things I wanted to promote, as well as transparency in government. Mm. 
Mm. I, and I mean real tra transparency, not just to say a lot of people are talking about transparency as a political mm -hmm. catchphrase, but I don't think they really have an intent or, or a real concrete way of how we're going to effectively provide that transparency and making it relevant. And then civic engagement. And th those three things are, I think, elements of how we empower people to be a part of the government. See, we are very unique here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. We have the ability to, actually the way things are supposed to go as it was designed, is that the people lead. The people lead. I mean, that's why we have a, a strong council, a weak mayor uh, structure. That's why we have a clerk and we have a treasurer separated from the mayor. Mm -hmm. It was all designed to make sure that power is not concentrated in one place, but that people are empowered to build and develop and to further the city. And that's what I intend to do. I've, I've heard many people who've run for this office in years past, and they've said that they want to be the 51st alderman, or, or they have these, they, they love, the, there's a, a real uh, favor for using these terms, but not have a real practical means of what that means. Mm -hmm. So you and I right now, we have the authority today mm -hmm. to write ordinances, to bring them before the city council, mm. to have city council deal with them. As a citizen. As a citizen, as a citizen. We don't know the power that we have. Exactly. And and along those lines, one of the things that uh, we're really building in our campaign, we looked at the, because uh, this falls directly in, under the privy of the, of the Chicago City Clerk, which is the city vehicle sticker program. You mm. talked about the this, this, uh, speed cameras, the lights, and all that type of stuff. All of that falls as far as getting that um, respond, having citizens to respond to their, their feelings about it can come from the clerk's office. Right now, the clerk is where you pay to get your city sticker. Mm -hmm. The city sticker program was started 100 years ago. Mm at a time we didn't have streets and sands. Mm. We didn't have uh, the surcharge on gas that we do for roads oh God, and we maintenance. Talk about we gas. didn't have mm. a, a extra tax on parking as we do for maintenance. Now we have these options. The, the what was one time the leading uh, revenue for street repair is now less than one sixth of, of what it's, of, of the street repair uh, dedicated dollars. This is. That's why our streets are so raggedy. Well. Here is the thing. We don't know why our streets are raggedy. We know that there has not been the transparency and clarity in government mm. that lets us know anything. Mm -hmm. But we know for certain that this vehicle tax mm -hmm. is not fair. It's repressive. Mm -hmm. It hits the people who are, it hits those of us who are struggling to make ends meet mm -hmm. the hardest. Mm. And we know that this needs to stop. Mm -hmm. and, then we, and then we need to look at, at what really it does take because it, it, it's if you look at all the money that we do spend on that's dedicated around the terms of streets and maintenance, mm -hmm. we should have streets of gold. Yes, we, we should. We don't have streets of gold. Yes, we should. So what we need to do is to provide some relief, and we need to really look at how do we, what are the things that we can do to encourage people, inspire people, to want to contribute to the uh, civic, uh, to the civic culture in society. And contribute how? by volunteering your time, by having, by supporting businesses and having more uh, opportunities for folks to really take charge of, of their government. This is our city. Yes. This is our city. And we don't know the power that we, we have. We don't know the power We wait we on have. officials exactly. to give us the power. Exactly. And it's, it's benefits of shows like this, like your radio show. And I've, I've actually listened to you before and I've actually seen you on, when I've been home on Saturdays and, and seen your, your other shows. It's these types of things. This and what Can TV is all about. Mm -hmm. These are the things that add to uh, broadening the cultural, not only cultural diversity, but the flavor and the health of mm -hmm. a community. Mm -hmm. Every study in ur about urban cities that are successful will tell you this, diversity is the key. One thing can't do it, but we've got to have an environment that fosters diversity. When you have a situation where you've got to pay $200 a year for a sticker that you don't know what it's for, and let me tell you something else. We did some research of the top 13 cities in America we're the only city with a tax like this. Really? The only city. The only, the, the one city that's closest in our area that has a tax like this is in Milwaukee, and Milwaukee's is less than $50, something like $20. Wow. And we have the power to do something about that. Right, we could, and you know what? That's what this campaign is mm -hmm. about, is empowering people 
you know, you know, like I said when we announced, if we have to turn over some tape, bump into tables or turn tables over to get city right, mm -hmm. to get the city right, and and I just, you know, I just want to say uh, something else. I heard your caller talk about who who people are predicting who they think is going to be the uh, next mayor. I don't think mm -hmm. anyone knows, it, but I don't think, I think that it will be difficult mm -hmm. for anyone to assuredly say that anyone's going to win or mm -hmm. not win. Mm -hmm. I've been all over this city, and I can mm -hmm. tell you something. And that's when we were at the minister's event, and, mm -hmm. and then I saw you at mm -hmm. the uh, at the uh, um, Safer Foundation mm -hmm. event as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. There are winds of change coming across yes. the city. Yes. I don't think anything is safe. I don't. I don't either. think anyone is assured of anything. That's why I'm voting for Amara in there <laughs> because I'm sick of what what we're experiencing now, and I know I'm not the only one. And if you're sick of it too, give us a call and let us know. 312-738-1845. Give us a closing thought for those who are watching and why they should vote for Mark Loveless. Because vote for Mark Loveless is empowering yourself. Mm. That's how we take, how do we take care, how do we take control of our city? We set a course mm. and we set a demand. Mm. I have a high expectation of what I want to do, of what I can do and what I will do. I want you to have a high expectation of me to perform as mm. well. And when you do that, then we will change city government. It will be a city that we can all, not just the wealthy and the, the people that are happy now, mm -hmm. they can be happy, but mm -hmm. we're going to be happy too. We want to be happy we're too. We're going to be happy. We're like Pharrell, we want to be happy. We want to be I'm happy as well. <laughs> Because I'm happy, and I want you happy, so let's all be happy. Well, thank you so much, Mark, for coming out today. We greatly appreciate you. We're going to go to a commercial break, and my husband, Tony Holt, is coming back, and we're going to talk a little bit about other things that we have uh, resources here for you at the Higher Learning Network. And thank you for watching, so you stay tuned, stay close. We're going to go to commercial break, and we'll be right back. HigherLearningNetwork.org, check it out, and we got lots more information for you, so just stay close. And thanks for watching. Come on back! Okay, I'll get you good with bubbles. How about that? Yee! Oh, that was a big one! Okay. Woo! Gonna have a bubble for me? Now, Mike, Mike, say it with. That is our promo for the Higher Learning Network as well as the European American Association. We've partnered and we're trying to provide toys for tots. For the holiday, if you have a toy, please donate it to the European American Association in honor of the Higher Learning Network. They're located at 2827 West Division Street, right here in Chicago, the corner of California, I'm sorry, Mozart and Division, mm -hmm. one block past California. So if you've got some toys for the tots, we'd appreciate that uh, you get them to the children who are in need of them. And uh, we might have a chance for one more call, 312-738. 1845 for our live broadcast here at the Higher Learning Network with my co-host Tony Hoax, host of Men well, on Higher Learning. Uh, you're my co-host today. Yes, sir. <laughs> we, well, we, this has really been an interesting show though today. You know, I'm glad to, we talked about those tickets. One thing wasn't mentioned is how they want you to double up on the yeah, tickets. Yeah, don't pay before it. Before you do it and they have a chance of booting you then. It's just yeah. like, man, it's just raping us. Yeah. Ooh, that's, <laughs> a good, terrible. That, that's a good word. That's a good word. Ron, y'all need to think about that really, you know, because work the kinks out. There's a lot of kinks. Yeah, <laughs> a lot and of it's kinks. costing us. It's totally costing everyone. My, I got several friends and family members who have the same problem. It's, it's really getting redundant. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, pretty much everybody in the, in the city of Chicago who drives yeah. has that issue. Yeah. You know, it's not just us, it's everybody. Yeah. And it doesn't matter where you live, who you are, and where you come yeah, from. We have enough worries paying our bills that are steady going up. Right, <laughs> everything's everything going up. And 
with Ebola getting here, that's a bigger oh, worry. Ebola, let me tell oh, you. Um, LaDonna told me, LaDonna Tittle, your tittle in the middle, we had this conversation yesterday when we were preparing for today's show mm -hmm. that Dr. Oz said Ebola came from rat droppings. Mm. How the rat droppings, I forgot she said how they got into the, the human part of us, it, it happens. But anyway, that supposedly that's how Ebola came. But you know what? It, it, I am totally against, not totally, but 95% against mainstream media because they tell us what they want us to exactly. think. Exactly. Because they don't know, we don't know how to think for ourselves when, because we think everything we see on television is real. And you know, I've, I've heard, and, you know, rumors throughout the years how uh, a lot of this here is like chemical warfare. It's it actually is. how these, I'll call them mad scientists. These scientists work for these governments and uh, they, they create these diseases and they go in third world countries and sample this stuff out. Right. You know, and then they can't control it. Right. Then it gets uh, out of hand. Just like right. AIDS. They say yeah. AIDS was manufactured in a lab. Mm -hmm. So exactly. how, how do we know that Ebola wasn't manufactured exactly. in a lab? Exactly. I mean, all this new stuff coming up. Come on. <laughs> Well, we hope that you have enjoyed the show today. We've got a wealth of resources for you on uh, self-publishing, how to make money mystery shopping. I forgot to mention it for grant money, for scholarships, for students. Never take out a loan. Parents, never, ever, ever. I went through eight years of college, and no, I don't have a master's or, or uh, a Ph.D., but I was too busy playing bid with, so I know how to get the money. You do not have to take out a loan. Tell somebody there's too much free grant money out here to take out alone. Just remember that. 312-738-1845. If you have a call. Caller, are you there? Good morning. How are you? Hello. Good morning. Yes, it's Tittle. Hey, Tittle in the middle. You know what? Uh, that was wrong. Uh, it's bat droppings. B-A-T. Bat droppings. Bat droppings. Bat droppings. Yes. Well, those, those, are, those are flying rats. <laughs> rat, rat with wings. <laughs> so. But yeah, supposedly, uh, <laughs> Tony is so funny. <laughs> supposedly, uh, according to what I saw in Dr. Oz, one of my favorite shows, Watch as Well as Yours, is that uh, from a child who ate something with some bat droppings on it and supposedly got Ebola and then it transferred on to the tribe and so forth. That's what they and want us to do. The, one say. of the theories, I should say, because, like you said, it could have been invented in a lab. Yeah. Exactly. But I don't think so. I think this is very real and it's very scary. And I think it, it's probably hyped more than it should. But now, after hearing the statistics of how many people have contracted it and died, and then, too, I'm relating this to uh, this uh, other serious uh, coughing disease and respiratory disease that children are getting. Mm -hmm. That's so alarming. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, correct. Well, right. thank you so much for sharing that, thank LaDonna. You, we greatly appreciate Definitely. that. And thank you, uh, viewers, for watching the show today. Uh, if there's if there's anything that we didn't cover right. that you need, uh, and, uh, we want to thank thanks you. Thanks for staying on purpose, stay empowered, and stay tuned to your next Higher Learning Network and Men on Higher Learning. And your show comes on at what time? Uh, it's at 1030 tonight. 1030 tonight and 11 o'clock tomorrow. Be sure and go to the website, higherlearningnetwork.org. Stay on purpose, stay empowered, and stay tuned for more of Higher Learning. Peace. Oh, Thank you.